Silver shorts are about to be squeezed. All right, let's start with the Comex Silver. Massive Comex Silver withdrawals drop vault totals to just over 320 million ounces, which is the lowest since June 2020. And registered totals still at lowest levels since February 2018. And open interest now equal to 212% of all vaulted silver and almost 1,500% of registered silver. And here's a chart from David Brady that just shows that the commercials have gone net long on silver for the second time in history. Actions speak louder than words when it comes to banks, David says. They're all downgrading their forecasts for precious metals and yet they're loading up long, especially in silver. Now, I shared this chart that showed that SLV cost to borrow was at 4.6%. And then I updated that to say, no, 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 it's now 5.3%. However, that's now wrong as well. So the SLV borrowing fee is now 6.21%. But wait, that's out of date now too. At the time of this recording, which is Friday the 16th of September, it's now 7.15%. So it's gone from 4.6% to 7.15% in what, the last week or so? And this is the um, the money managers, the head fund, uh, hedge fund managers, the, the, the speculators. They're net short. They're borrowing. They're net short. The banks are net long. So all I say is good luck. To the speculators, I think they're, I think they're possibly going to get wrecked. But what I want to do now is I just want to cut to a clip from a few years ago. Ed Steer uh, talks about the comics market, how the comics market works. So if you're still trying to get your head around how the comics market works, I think Ed Steer, uh, this presentation that he did, uh, explains it. I think everyone will be able to understand. So what I want to do is cut to a clip of that. I'll put the whole video of Ed Steer's presentation in the uh, description below. So if you want to watch the whole thing, which I definitely recommend, um, check it out in the, in the description below. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And... Uh... Thank you for coming uh, and showing up on the uh, latter part of the second day of a conference, which is always a tough, uh, which is always tough because people are starting to head for the exits. What I want to talk about today is just how concentrated the position, short positions are of the precious metals in the COMEX futures market, because that is where the price of all commodities are set. And in precious metals, it's, uh, it's rather astounding. This is the Commitment of Traders Report. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I wanted to point out one thing. This is for silver. The open interest in silver, like the number of long contracts and the number of short contracts, is 195,000. It's right up there. That translates into 959 million troy ounces of sil paper silver because there's 5,000 ounces in every contract. Now, you can either be long the market or short the market. If you want to go long in the COMEX futures market, you have to find somebody who's prepared to go short against you at that particular price. So you can't go in and just say, I want to be long the market or short the market. There has to be it's a zero-sum game. So if you go long, somebody has to go short. There's a winner and a loser on every side of the trade. So in that number, there's 195,000 long contracts and 195,000 short contracts. There's also market neutral spread trades, which I'm not going to get into, but they, uh, you can be long, let's say you could be long December and short July, and you work on the spread differential between the prices of those months, and I'm not going to get into it, but as far as the commitment of traders report is concerned, if you're long one month and short the other month, the sum is still zero. Now, there are, the original purpose of the uh, the COMEX futures market was for producers and consumers, producers of the metal and users of the metal, to lay off risk on speculators. Uh, that has changed over the last 50 or 60 years, and now what you see out there is a total casino. 
if you took out all the silver miners that, you, that mine it and all the people that were using it, that open interest number, which shows us 195,000, would be very close to zero. Because there is nobody in that market now that is either a producer. You go to any mining company, I take the 50 largest gold and silver mining companies, I can absolutely guarantee you not one of them has a COMEX futures contract. It's all speculators. It's all the banks versus the hedge funds versus the managed money. There's three sets of traders. There's the commercials, the non-commercials. If you're a commercial, you're a bank. That's JP Morgan, Citigroup, Scotiabank, Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, Credit Suisse, First Boston, whatever. They could be foreign banks, Bank of China. If you've got more than 150 contracts and you're a commercial trader, you're in the commercial category. A non-commercial trader would be a hedge fund, managed money trader, or some mutual fund that trades commodities uh, as part of their management portfolio. So if you're not a bank and you have a large position, you're a non-commercial trader. And the small category, which is over on the far right, those are the small traders. And as Ted Butler says, silver analyst Ted Butler said, there are thousands of them. So this 195,000 contracts, 195,000 contracts is divided up between two or 3,000 traders, but it's the concentration of those positions within a very few hands that causes the prices to be managed. And I'll point that out. You can't, I don't know how well you can read that, but, uh, but um, anyway, what it shows here, it's, it shows that the eight largest traders, that's eight out of thousands, eight traders out of thousands, all of them are banks or investment houses, U.S. banks or investment houses, are short 42% of the entire open interest in silver. And the largest four traders are short 29%. So it's not distributed equally. Those that have the most interest in controlling the price have the largest positions. So going on to the next slide, the 195,000, like I said, 195,000 contracts translates into 979 uh, million troy ounces. And when you divide that by the number of ounces that's produced every day, the silver market, the open interest in the silver market is 420 days of world silver production. That's over a year, a year's worth of silver production that uh, is in the open interest. So if you see that 420 days, we're gonna go right to the silver chart now. And this is all the commodities that are traded on the COMEX, copper, sugar, crude oil, coffee, nickel, not nickel, I'm sorry, the four precious metals, cocoa. And there's a short position of silver right over there. It's on the far right, 420 days worth of silver production. 420 days, and you, here's crude oil. It's over on the far left, right down here. The, the total open interest in crude oil is 29 days of world crude production. The short position of the four largest, tra four largest traders is five days. And the short position of the eight largest traders is seven. Let me, and the price of crude oil is what, $70 a barrel and going up? Let me ask you this question. What would the price of crude oil be if it had a short position of the big eight traders, which is 122 days? You took that and dropped it over here. Or any of these commodities. They all be in the dirt. So the four, the four um, precious metals, one, two, three, four, are all nailed to the right-hand side, and they've been there for a couple of generations, like 40 or 50 years, ever since the COMEX futures market was brought into existence in 1973 for the precious metals. So they've always been there. And the red bar is the position of the four traders, and the green bar is the position of the eight. So that's 29% of the total open interest. That's 42% of the total open interest that the four and eight traders have. And this is the total open interest the longs, the shorts, and the spread trades. And like I said, the spread trades are market neutral. So on the next slide, and I hope to have time for questions, on the next slide, I've just singled out the four, the four uh, precious metals, and there they are. And what I did is I went, and you can get the information what the spread trades are, at least some of them, and subtract them out. So what happens is you subtract the spread trades out, the short position in silver goes from... Uh, 420 days down to 381. And you can see they all drop, especially gold goes from 171 days down to 142. That's the total open interest. So you can see as it drops the concentration, because when you divide these numbers into these numbers, the bigger the bar, the lower the concentrations. So in gold, if you take a look at gold, 
The big eight traders are short 53% of the entire open interest in the COMEX futures market. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that what those eight traders do, and they all trade in units, they all go long at the same time, they all go short at the same time, it's all for one and one for all, like the three musketeers said. And that happens in all of these commodities. In palladium, it's 63%. You've got eight traders out of hundreds. Now, there's not as many traders in palladium, obviously, as there, are, as there is in gold and silver, but you've got many hundreds, and you've got eight of them that are short 63% of the market. In platinum, it's 40, 46, and, palladium, and silver is 46 as well. But like I said, if I could take out all the spread trades, these numbers would be over 50% as well. So what you have is, is a commitment of traders report that shows in black and white, because these numbers come right from that report. It's a government report that comes out every week. And it's supposed to, it indicates to the, the people in the, at the CFTC that there's a huge disparity here. And this report is generated to make sure that there's no, no concentration built up so these prices can never be affected by one single trader or one group of traders. Well, that's not been the case for 20 or 30 or 40 years. There's always been this concentrated short position. And until that changes, until JP Morgan, they're the biggest culprit of the bunch, until that changes, nothing changes. I'm gonna go back to um, silver for a second. Here's the four traders. Um, uh, they're, sh they're short 122 days of world silver production and the five th and, the f and the big eight are short. Just these, it's just these eight traders, you can break them down. The numbers, the pub CFTC publishes them themselves. If you take these two bars, this is what the short position of the large eight traders is. JP Morgan is short 49 days of world silver production. Silver analyst Ted Butler is able to calculate this every week from the numbers that the CFTC publishes. I've been following his work for almost 20 years now, and uh, I know how he calculates it, and I'm not disagreeing. Ted Butler's work is one of the best in the industry, uh, as Ed Steer said, and if you guys are serious silver investors, then you should be subscribed to Ted's research. Uh, if you're not, I'll put a link in the description below to Ted's website where you can subscribe to his work and get all his uh, latest updated information. And thanks to Kevin Muir from the Macro Tourist for these next couple of charts. And here you can see the manage money net short position. So the speculators who are net short, go back and have a look at the last time they were kind of short as well. And what happened to the silver price not too long after that? And the silver commercials, so the banks net position over the last 15 years, pretty shocking, right? But what's happened? They've gone net long, something we very rarely see. And once again, what happened to the price not long after they went net long. And if you really want to know where or who has been draining the London warehouses, look no further than India. I shared a chart about China in the last uh, episode, but that's more around gold. Here, Indian bullion imports. Uh, look at that in 2022. Compare the yellow to 2021. And we believe August was very big as well. So yeah, watch this space. Uh, there's big things happening in the silver market. I know the price right now doesn't uh, reflect what's happening. But uh, gee, this is the market is providing a wonderful discount to an asset where the fundamentals makes a lot of sense. And I want to finish off this video with this quote from the In Gold We Trust report. Uh, from earlier this year, which I've been meaning to do a video on because there's so many gold nuggets in the In Gold We Trust report, but I've just been so busy that we haven't got around to it. And just the, the speed of the news and what's happening with the economy and the macro is just changing so quickly that I haven't had a chance to do a video on this. Uh, but here's the quote. Gold is the inverse of paper, unlimited to the upside, limited to the downside. It's not the total stock of gold that matters, but the flow from those that already hold it.
and the same can be said about silver. So guys, if you like this video, once again, we ask that you hit that like button. Really do appreciate it. Love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut. And just a reminder, the information provided in this video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Nothing on this channel constitutes as financial advice. The information in this presentation is no substitute for financial advice, and all investors should seek advice from a licensed financial advisor having regard to your own objectives, financial situation, and needs.